it's just a little bit muddy around here as you can tell in our last video we were working outside and we were splitting wood and it threatened to rain on us all day long but thankfully the rain held off and we had the opportunity to use our new tool that we've added here on the homestead and uh, Lacey really got to <laughs> utilize her lumberjack skills even more so if you haven't seen that video make sure you check it out after you watch this one of course but uh that night after we were done with the project the rain did come and it left an imprint here on the ground and it's muddy and yucky everywhere so i really won't be working outside today and right over here is where i'll be working today i'll still be outside but i'll be inside while outside well if that makes any sense right here is where i've been working on my high tunnel for my chickens to overwinterize them and uh, i don't necessarily recommend doing it exactly the way that i did this one in principle i recommend doing it this way because i got this concept from joel salton who in the winter time he brings his chickens and his ducks in his high tunnels in his greenhouse area and that helps them to really add fertilizer into the ground and it provides them a nice warm place over the colder months to keep their water from freezing and just a nice area for them to have sanitary with the mulch and all that good stuff but then when it gets warm in springtime you can move them out and then you can grow crops in here like tomatoes which i'm planning to do and hopefully these will be the best tomatoes that i have ever grown because the chickens and the few ducks that are in here are going to help me to do so. Well, back to what I was saying about I don't recommend doing it exactly the way that I've done it here. Because of my gallbladder surgery and dealing with time and rain and stuff like that, I really just quickly set this up as quickly as I could to get this area covered. Especially for the chickens. The ducks can kind of deal with all kind of moist, moist environments and be fine. But the duck, the chickens really like for the area to be drier and with having the mulch and have them do their job to be able to scratch and, and keep the area more sanitized, it really needs to be covered and not be all yucky and muddy like it is on other areas around our homestead. So what I did is I concreted the post, corner post and, and middle post into the ground which i do recommend doing that but i just quickly set up the hoops i haven't really fully secured it and i uh, got the plastic over top and then we started adding the mulch so they'll be comfortable but i really need to go back through and make sure this area is secure by making sure all of our posts like this one right here are in the ground don't have that in yet so that is what i'm going to be doing today and it feels warmer and nicer in here just a little bit louder with the ducks echoing And I also need to put up our wood sides right here to run alongside the hoops to connect all the hoops as well as putting the channel lock and wiggle wire in there helps secure the plastic together and keeps your sides from blowing and flapping up like that. And I'm a huge fan, especially from experience, of securing your, your greenhouse, your caterpillar tunnel, high tunnel, securing all that down as best as you can which is another reason why I recommend concrete concreting your, or at least your corners in because I've seen I've I've seen it where wind comes and it picks the thing up like Mary Poppins flying through the air and, and you don't want that there's some farmers that I don't know how they get away without having their, the wind pick it up and blow it away but uh, I have seen it happen too many times and I've learned to secure my greenhouses caterpillar tunnels as much as possible and we've done that with our main greenhouse which is down right down there by our house and it has worked so so much better and uh it hasn't been flying in there like mary pop <laughs> Alrighty, so I brought over our post that we're going to be putting into the ground and the hoops go right into these just insert right in there as well as Our sledgehammer which we'll be using to pound them in However, one of the things that I've learned as well is I Can't use a sledgehammer 
to do the post or then you start having this kind of stuff right happen right here and then you won't be able to insert your post into it and then you also can't use one of the the fence t-post driver because it's too low on the ground so what do you use well right in here we have a post driver and this goes right into here just like that and then your sledgehammer hits just right on top of there without bending your metal and uh, you can actually get into it a lot lower than you can with the t-post a driver for sure so I definitely recommend this this tool right here and you can get it from bootstrap farmer and uh, I get a number of things from bootstrap farmer also got some tape here to cover up some of the holes that we have in our plastic on our greenhouses but they have a lot of great things like I, I'm a huge fan of their cell their seed trays they hold up very well they're very very sturdy the best I've been able to find but um, I'll leave the link in the show notes below All right, each of my hoops, I'm putting five feet apart. And we'll measure out five feet between this hoop and this one. And we'll start putting them all in. All right, so this one side is done with the ground post in. Now we gotta do this other side over here. But I must admit, I was somewhat jealous. I've been somewhat jealous. I've seen some of my other homestead YouTube buddies out there. They've done a similar project and some of them have some pretty nice brand new greenhouses that they set up. But hey, I'm working with what I have and encourage you guys to do the same. This plastic right here is used. We're reusing it. It's not brand new. But hey, once again, we're using what we have. And you guys can do a similar setup at your homestead or in your backyard wherever don't feel like you have to do it exactly the way i'm doing it because hey i'm not sharing how to videos of something that's brand new i'm just trying to provide you guys tell our story along the way just provide you guys with some inspiration and hey maybe you can decide to do something similar because uh just doing this with the chickens the past year and a half two years and see the quality of soil that they can contribute and, and the the results of what can grow after they leave an area it's pretty amazing just like right outside here where we let the chickens stay over the summer and then they just made some really really good compost and now there's still things growing in it and it's been this green right now even with the temperatures in the 20s it's pretty amazing so i'm hoping i can tap in to that energy even more and more here on the homestead well, i need to stop yapping let's do the other side Ground posts on our second side are in. They may need to be modified just slightly uh, as we start moving into the next step, which will show even more why the way I'm doing it right now is not ideal. But hey, how often is life and life situations ideal? Almost never. Uh, but in this next step, I'm gonna need some help. So uh, let's see if we can get some backup. So what I'm going to do is, because we have to do the rush setup, I'm going to have to go ahead and loosen these up. And if you could, two ladies could be on each side, we're just going to insert them into the ground post once I loosen up here. And then we'll just keep moving on down. I think we can do that. All right, let's get rocking. Okay. Okay. 
this one's full. Yeah, down in there. All right, we're down to our last hoop. It's actually not the last one here on this row, but we had to skip one because one of the ground posts that I put in, since we're reusing the material from other projects, is it's filled with clay and Lacey wasn't able to get the hoop, the straight part of the hoop that extends from the, from the ground post to the curved hoop into our ground post. So I'm gonna have to get this out of there and figure out a way to get the clay out or try to find another pole that we can use for the ground post here. Uh, let's first get it out of the ground. While Mike's over there figuring out how he's gonna get all that dirt out of that post, I'm just standing here in the sun, just feeling it, because it hasn't been out for the past couple of weeks. It's been kind of dreary. And watching the chickens scratch and peck and fertilize this whole area that used to be a forest. And this year is gonna be a really cool garden for us, or that's what we're going for. That's why the chickens are here this winter. And one thing that I'm really looking forward to growing this year are some tomatoes that I got the seeds from Teresa Salatin whenever we were at Polyface. She had these beautiful tomatoes sitting on her counter and uh, I was asking about them and she said, well, those are from my grandmother and she grew them every year. We don't even know what the name of them is, but she grows, Teresa grows some plants out every single year and saves seeds. And so right before we left, I, was, I said, hey, Teresa, can I have a couple of your tomatoes so I can save the seeds to your grandmother's tomatoes and grow them out on our homestead? And she was more than happy to do that for me. So I have these seeds that I want to plant this year and I want to see how well they do and see if they get to be huge like uh, the ones that Teresa grows. And I'm so excited about that this year. Like, what are you guys looking forward to growing? You know, there's also herbs that I want to grow and all different kinds of stuff. And I'll go over that in another video. But right now, what are you growing right now? Or what are you dreaming about growing? I love to hear everybody's plans for the future and, uh, and what you're doing right now. So let me know in the comments and uh, I'd love to hear it. I'm just gonna stand here for a little while longer and enjoy the sunshine and watch the chickens. Farm TV, right? Thank you ladies very much. I think I can keep going from here. Right. Why don't you guys go ahead and start those tomatoes that, that we got from Teresa and Salatin and Joel. I go get some trays ready. Man, those, I could just think of those tomatoes right now. They were so yummy, weren't they, Sailor? <laughs> they were just juicy. Do you remember them? You don't remember the tomatoes from Polyface Farm? Those big, luscious, Oh, they were so juicy tomatoes, some of the best ones I've ever had. Now I think I do. Oh, I had to jog your memory. <laughs>
tray. Whole tray. Finished. Well, thinking about the tomatoes, it is that time of year that we need to start our tomato seeds inside so we can get them out as soon as we can right after our last frost date. So I'm gonna go inside and uh, find my tomato seeds that I saved and we're gonna stick them in a tray. And I look forward to May or June eating some big old fat tomatoes. Well, I found my seeds that I saved. So now, we're just gonna pop them in a tray. Well, there we go first tray of seeds planted for 2021 it feels kind of good I mean I enjoy winter time and kind of having time off but you know there's something about always looking forward to new life and new growth and uh, a lot of times that comes in the summer so I'm looking forward to growing these tomatoes and showing you their progression throughout the seasons so make sure you stay tuned so you can see how they turn out well, since this was a how not to video, if you're looking for some actual good how to videos on how to construct hoop houses, greenhouses from the ground up, check out our friends at Bootstrap Farmer. Check out their YouTube channel. They have some great how to videos on how to set up hoop houses and more.